we the indian society of heating refrigerating and air conditioning engineers ishri stand tall in the indian industry with over 10000 professionals as members and almost an equal number of student members founded in 1981 and headquartered in delhi we operate from chapters and sub chapters spread all over india bringing our entire industry together individuals become members of our society according to their professional and academic standings our road map of the future looks very bright with thousands of new members joining this technical society every year and bringing in a fresh outlook to our industry intelligence ishray disseminates knowledge to its technical committees which consists of some of the best minds of our industry it publishes technical books newsletters and a prestigious journal distributing the wealth of knowledge to all its members working with government departments ishray helps formalize industry codes and standards ishray promotes research by offering financial support to student members to carry out ground breaking work in technology systems and processes our educational wing ishray institute of excellence organizes training programs and workshops to help members enhance their skill sets our specially designed certification programs under icp that is ishray certified professional empower professionals to always be in step with the prevailing technology specially designed courses for technicians are offered to meet the ever increasing demand for a skilled workforce ishray organizes exhibitions conferences panel discussions and product presentations throughout the country we organize the industry's largest international exposition in south asia acrex india to showcase the cutting edge technology innovation and provide a platform for closer interactions amongst the decision makers in the industry the acrex exhibition is now growing from hvac and r show into bfa build fair alliance this brings together several allied shows connected with the building services industry all at one location our chapters organize several other popular events like acriconf in delhi raycon in kolkata symposia in mumbai tech fest in goa and many more We are committed to provide training and career guidance to our student members through seminars, lectures, quiz contests and site visits. A Quest, a prestigious quiz competition organized by Ishre to catalyze the transformation of the budding engineering professionals. Ishre provides a platform to potential employers to select student members for careers in HVAC and our industry at the Ishre job junction. Young minds are made aware of the need for saving power, clean air and sustainability. The K12 initiative of Ishre focuses attention on school students development to inculcate a scientific fervor and help develop them into responsible citizens. Speedy information is imperative to keep moving forward in this hyper connected digital age. Searcher, a specifically designed search engine is now available which allows access to a well cataloged database on HVACR and building services industry with just a few clicks. Ishray cooperates with various national and international bodies industry governments academia think tanks to promote the concept of sustainability environmental protection and energy efficiency and conservation to enter and explore the universe of the indian hvacr industry log on to ishray.in that unfolds a panorama of information 
Let us engineer a sustainable future together through Ishre. Hello and uh, good afternoon, everyone, all the panelists. As we know that today we are going to cover uh, uh, the topic session level indoors. Uh, this program is sponsored by IntelliGreen Technology and organized by Women Isra team of Delhi Chapter of Isra. So without delay, I request Gaurav Sandila sir to proceed from here with the uh, with your PPT, sir. Over to you. Sure, sure. Thank you, Tapas. Uh, so far, uh, I would like the, uh, to share my screen also. So could you provide me the sharing rights? Please go ahead, sir. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Gaurav, Gaurav Shandilya. I am the founder and director of IntelliGreen Technologies, and we are working on indoor air quality air purification field from past five years. We have successfully deployed our solutions to more than 12 million square feet space pan India. Uh, I mean, to various prestigious private as well as uh, government bodies, clients. So I would like to just highlight the technology with which we are working with and just want to introduce the uh, technical content for this. So this, this, is, this is a hybrid air purification system, which we provide as a central air purification for indoor air to maintain the indoor air quality levels. Uh, this hybrid air purification system consists of uh, parts like one is active air purification, which we are doing through using uh, needle point bipolar ionization technology through plasma air as well as uh, passive air purification using various kinds of filtrations, passive as well as MERV-14 level charged filters. Uh, monitoring for all indoor air quality contaminants. So this, this complete, I mean, together combined all these solutions can be deployed in uh, any kind of building, whether it is a uh, office workspace or uh, residential apartment or uh, hospitals or mass accumulation places like uh, train stations, airports, or even to industrial facilities uh, and to wastewater treatment plants also. Depending on the type of contaminant, this system works. We design the solution and the system works to eliminate that kind of pollutant from the air. So if I talk about here, if I introduce this plasma air needle point bipolar ionization technology, so this technology is helpful in eliminating all kind of pollutants within the space, within the occupied environment, within the occupied space. 
so based on various cfm capacities we basically place these uh, plasma air equipments into the supply side onto the throw of the air of hvac system uh, it can be integrated in any kind of hvac system whether it is a vrf system or air handling units so this is completely scalable system the equipments vary uh, from right from 2000 cfm till 40000 cfm there are various kinds of equi equipments which can be deployed and these equipments uh, 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 also do not bring any kind of pressure drop into the system so it's completely retrofit in uh, in nature as as we place the these equipments into the throw of the air the principle on which this technology works is plasma so cold plasma technology and uh, we basically create ions positive ions and negative ions the atoms and molecules which loses an electron by imparting the uh, electrical energy through these equipments becomes positive ion the one which gains that electron becomes negative ion so in this manner a cloud of positive and negative ion is created at the mechanical side uh and then uh, that those ions travel with the air flow of the system air flow of the hvac system they come inside the occupied space where the humans are present and they distribute uniformly in air as well as on surfaces in millions of numbers and once distributed uniformly they eliminate harmful particulate matter levels from the space the process is very simple they basically charge the suspended ultra fine particles uh in both polarity positive and negative and as these uh, polar uh, uh, opposite polarity particles combine with each other they become heavy and as they go back into the return path we are stem in the into the filter system this is this is a quite uh, uh, proven and successful technology even to move those particles which are very difficult to carry on through hvac system also like stratified dust and this helps in uh, basically uh, reducing the particle count from the air the second uh, contaminant present inside the occupied space harmful gases which are carcinogenic in nature are called volatile organic compounds so to these volatile organic compounds within the occupied space these ions as comes inside the occupied space they trigger a chemical reaction with by combining with them and they break down them into less harmful ones so all type of volatile organic compounds gets eliminated by using this technology whether it is uh, formaldehyde benzene toluene xylene any kind of aldehyde alcohol or odor that gets eliminated by using this technology the third contaminant which is contaminant of concern from past a uh, couple of years is microbials so viruses bacteria mold yeast fungus allergen specifically if we talk about these microorganisms like viruses and bacteria so ions basically surround uh, uh, these these uh, microorganisms and they penetrate on their infection triggering capability <clears throat> which is their protein structure so they basically dehydrate the protein of any uh, this uh, organism virus or bacteria so that as they enter into the human body they they would not be able to penetrate the human host cell so in this manner basically we um, eliminate these three kind of pollutants from the air as you can see one make the particle counts uh, heavy so that uh, they can be arrested into the filter break down the volatile organic compounds and uh, as well as remove the microbial counts uh, from the air uh, we have various test, test reports globally we have tested this on various kinds of pollutants whether it is uh, microorganisms like uh, uh, sars cov2 variants omicron or uh, human strain uh, swine flu uh, on smoke on particulates on volatile organic compounds so all all those testing reports are available with us and uh, specifically this technology uh, uh, what we are carrying is completely zero ozone certified technology which is which is having a ul2998 certification and this ul2998 certification helps in uh, basically i mean uh, since ul is uh, now paperless 
So anyone can go and check into their directory that uh, what certifications you are providing for this zero ozone. So all our products are UL2998 certified. So this is a basically a combination of technology helps in uh, uh, removing the pollutants from mechanical side as well as within the occupied space also continuously. So as to create a clean and safe environment. Passive air purification, uh, a part of this hybrid air purification, as I said, it's a combination of mechanical filters. We are using charge filters, charge filters of uh, even to MAR-14, MAR-15 uh, categories, and they basically eliminate uh, the particles uh, from even uh, 0.3 micron also from the space. So this is this is how we, we basically design a system. We place these uh, filtrations to the return side and to the outdoor air side. We place uh, plasma system onto the supply side completely so as to make it uh, a plasma ionized zone uh, the, uh, 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 to create a bioclimate rich in ions inside the occupied space. And of course, indoor air quality monitoring helps in checking the data, uh, what, what levels we have improved as well as to make the uh, brand value better for individual clients. So, so this is, this is I mean, how like this complete system is. We are bringing that this complete system to IoT based also. These are some of the plasma air device which have the nature of fit and forget. They, they, they have their self-cleaning mechanism in place, inbuilt mechanism, mechanism in place as well as they do not have any consumable also. So these type of plasma air equipments, what we are carrying is uh, basically fit and forget type in nature. And these are very helpful uh, in maintaining the air quality levels uh, inside the premises. So this is uh, basically our clientele, client list, and uh, this is all from my side. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, for sharing your knowledge. Yeah. So, uh, if you have any queries, uh, you can contact to Gaurav sir in the given number, or you can mail to Intelligreen in the given ID, info at intelligreentech.com. For more information, you can go to the website, www.intelligreentech.com. Thank you, Tabas. So, uh, further, I request uh, uh, our women chair, Sukda Tandon, ma'am, to introduce the speaker for the day because this, this program is being under being organized under the uh, women is safe. So, I request Sukda ma'am to further proceed from here with the introduction of the speaker. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Tapas ji, uh, and I welcome all the participants to this workshop. Uh, thank you so much, Gaurav ji, for a wonderful presentation on your products. Uh, now today, we begin with our uh, half-day workshop on sustainable indoors, presented by our very uh, eminent speaker, Dr. Priyanka Kulshestra. Ma'am, I welcome her to the session. Uh, she needs actually no introduction, but uh, I will have to go through a short introduction on her. Dr. Priyanka Kulshestra is a founding member and joint secretary of Society for Indoor Environment. She is presently a faculty at University of Delhi. She has 18 years of research experience in the field of exposure assessment and indoor air quality. She has industry academia experience for more than a decade and has supervised postgraduate dissertation projects. She has worked as a postdoctorate research fellow at Ospedale Lugi Sacco University in Milan, Italy, where she was actively involved in European Commission project of Health Event. She was involved in teaching activities on indoor air quality and health for MS course, risk assessment and risk analysis at Department of Occupational and Environmental Health at University of Milan. She is the reviewer of many international journals like Journal of Pollution and Health, Atmospheric Pollution Research, International Journal on Air and Waste Management, Air Quality Atmosphere, and Health, amongst the others. 
She has, to her credit, more than 35 publications in referred international journals, articles, conference papers, books, chapters, and many more. She's a visiting faculty at International Center of Environmental Audit and a sustainable development for capacity of building of auditors on issue related to in issue related to environment and sustainable development. She's also an, on the editorial board member for International Journal, Journal for Pollution, Health, Sustainability and Environment. She has been the scientific co-convener in the Asian Conference on in, Indoor Environment Quality 2019 AICEQ. And she's an active member of AICEQ today. She has been on the panel and as an expert, various international workshops on air pollution and waste management, which is wonderful, ma'am. We are honored to have you here with us and share your experience and knowledge with our participants. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, oh, without wasting any time, I would like to pass the session to you, ma'am. Thank you, Sudhaji. Thank you for your kind words. And uh, I thank Ishray and uh, the sponsoring organization. And it is irony that uh, Gaurajji spoke about the solutions before I spoke about the problem itself because that is what we have worked on but yes I agree solutions are something which we all look forward to so um, sorry without uh, wasting any more time I would like to uh, share my presentation with you all um, I would want to have this session to be interactive it will help me both ways one I'm not feeling very well I'm down with fever and uh, secondly, I would prefer to have uh, queries, questions, um, ideas, uh, which, uh, which can help me as a researcher who has been working in this for quite some time uh, to better myself up. So I look forward to having more uh, questions. Uh, you can stop me if you want, you have any query. So I look forward to it. So uh, how do, why did I keep this title as sustainable indoors? Um, like Gaurabji has already given solution for uh, various indoor air pollutants. In last two years, we have realized that we are not restricted to these combustible or particulate pollutants. The pollutants are varied in nature. And as he rightly said, they are our bioresorts. And Believe me, as a researcher in this field for the last two decades, the most neglected area in the field of indoor air quality has been bioaerosols. Somehow, because we as Indians, we tend to overlook uh, saying things like we have a better immunity, it doesn't affect us, virus comes every year. So how has it affected us? In different microenvironments. That is why sustainable indoors. Now, I didn't say indoor houses, indoor offices, indoor cars, buses, uh, your restaurants, schools. Everything that we do indoors needs to be sustainable. And how does it affect our life is what we need to look at. So the areas which I'll be covering in this uh, presentation are why is indoor air quality important to some extent? We all know why, but I still want to take you forward with it. Um, trying to focus more on the case studies, which have been done more on the studies from India and abroad, which talk about its importance in different microenvironments and how COVID-19 had an impact in public places, in residential houses, in offices, in terms of indoor air quality, the solutions to which you have already seen. And finally, some research case studies on air quality. So I want this presentation to be more uh, open and transparent. And in terms of research, it is an area where we can expand as much as we want to. They, we don't have any dimensions or boundaries to it. So why is indoor air quality important? Now, as we are approaching October, November, this is something which I, I have already started picking it up in the newspapers. And this is something which we all, if we are living in Delhi, we are thoroughly aware of. So, um, yes, uh, this is the condition that we are looking forward to. We already have some reported cases of fire, farm fires 
for Ali, as we commonly call as, and, and that results in uh, pollution. But this all has a history and it dates back to uh, 2016, when it was the first time that we um, saw that haze in the air and we, the, we could actually see the problem. But the problem was already there. It was just that we couldn't see it by our naked eyes. So outdoor air is a problem. I hope indoor is fine. That was the concept that people kept into their minds and stayed indoors during th that time. The disclaimers, the preventive uh, measures that were coming in the newspapers also highlighted that, you know, outdoors is very bad. Please don't get out. The schools were suspended. The offices, uh, probably they, they, anyone who had to come to the office could go, but otherwise any exposure to the outdoor air was said to be detrimental to your health. Okay, fine. Having said that, is it the indoor air quality which is fine? How do we divide it? How do we bifurcate that quality of air? So uh, when we define it, we say that indoor air quality is air that is found inside any enclosed space in concentrations which could affect your health or your performance. Now, when we are, what do we mean by health and performance? I mean that if I'm sitting in a room of uh, 12 by 15 square feet, how much should be, what should be the levels where I, uh, when I'm speaking or when I'm typing, my speed remains the same. I'm as concentrated as I should be and my respiratory health or physical health doesn't get affected negatively. So the indoor air quality, which takes care that the concentrations of pollutants, which are eminently there, and why so that we'll move forward to it. This is some of the data, which is very depressing in terms of numbers. And uh, the worst part is that um, we are again, uh, looking at these numbers and getting scared, not thinking about how to go ahead and bring the numbers down. So the, uh, this is the data by WHO and uh, household, as WHO commonly calls it as household air pollution, it results in at least 28% of deaths in India, which is reported. Having said that, in India, we are still at a very, uh, uh, very, uh, baby stage when I can say that we are recognizing indoor air quality as a problem. Now, uh, having said that, um, and this is a common, I think if anyone has attended my workshop, this is a common statement that I give. We just need to look back at how much time do we spend indoors. And when I say indoors, it doesn't mean your office. It doesn't just mean your homes. It doesn't just mean your cars. Total amount. So we spend if you go in a flashback for yesterday, you would have spent approximately 90% of your time indoors without realizing that you are uh, traveling for a very small amount of time outdoors and then getting into your uh, vehicle and then going to another place where you are working, coming back in that vehicle and coming to your house. Now, why I'm emphasizing this fact is this is what this presentation is all about. Why is there a hue and cry about the outdoor air pollution? Why do we see so many articles being talking about outdoor air pollution, Parali? I'm not against it at any point of time. I totally recognize its importance because there are no boundaries, as I said. But if we, in people living in an urban environment, People who are aware, people who are educated, people who are working uh, in white collar industry are uh, spending around 90% of our time indoors. Why is it that we give more uh, attention towards outdoors? Because if we talk about health, if we talk about problem, if we talk, if you see that the data that I was showing, Every one in three child in Delhi and NCR is having either some problem related to the respiratory health. So um, that is a question which we really need to ask. Exposure is something which is very undermined. 
we are not uh, we don't spend a lot of time outdoors until unless we are a player we are a cricket player or probably we are in sports or probably we have a field work job we don't most of us don't spend a lot of time outdoors then what should we be concerned about we should be concerned about where we are seeing what we are uh, looking at whether it is residential buildings whether it is our kids going to the school from 8 to 3 whether it is the office buildings where we work from 9 to 5 whether are there are hospitals which run 24 by 7 the doctors there are there for 8 to 10 hours probably more the malls and multiplexes too because there is a, a very common form of recreation the bazaars have been replaced by these indoor malls which is the new reality in terms of shopping and recreational activities and finally industries which we know that they have always always been the culprit when it comes to air pollution so uh, in terms of exposure what why uh, uh, do we emphasize indoor for air quality in terms of exposure is because this has a direct impact on your health and your performance in terms of the dust in terms of volatile organic compounds in terms of toxic gases like sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide oxides of nitrogen total volatile organic compounds they all cover chemical exposure then we have uh, sorry then we have biological exposure how many of you have actually noticed um any kind of fungi or seepage in your houses i think most of us will agree to that that we have noticed you know some wet patch of seepage somewhere around probably in your school probably in your home that you have uh, seen it across and if some of you would have been observant you would have realized that that patch starts getting as it starts getting older it turns its color from that wet patch to a green patch to a black patch so now what uh, what is the difference why what is happening there that is the uh, growth of fungi which is happening and which gets airborne finally causing lot of allergies however this as an area was not uh, i'll not say neglected but yes not very touched upon in terms of research which has been done on indoor air quality then uh, um covid has also uh, told us that the indoor air quality not in terms of pollutants only but in terms of the meteorological factors that we are surrounded with in terms of temperature in terms of humidity in terms of air movement also plays an important role in keeping the air quality good indoors or bad so um what could be the possible causes and these are causes mostly in terms of the urban built environment the way the buildings have been des designed nowadays they are very air tight poorly designed in terms of i am not saying for any particular building but generally we are working on energy efficiency nowadays energy efficiency and maintenance of indoor air, good indoor air quality in a building is a task it's like walking on a tight rope so that is a area which could be possibly a point of concern when it comes to the cause when it comes to uh, indoor sources the kind of adhesives we use the kind of uh, flooring we use uh, the paints that we use they all come uh contribute to the poor indoor air quality our dependencies over last two decades has increased on uh uh certain uh, products which are cleaning agents which are again chemical based agents so or there are uh, pesticides that we are using in housekeeping if you go to a hospital or a hotel they have a the facility managers do have a chart where they say they be cleaned every hour so every hour cleaning i know it's required for the sanitation and hygiene but every hour cleaning does contribute to the levels of uh, different types of uh, total volatile organic compounds in the in that particular microenvironment finally high temperature and humidity levels 
also play a role. We'll come to that later in the presentation. And yes, infiltration of outdoor air. If we are talking about the outdoor air being as polluted or probably more polluted than indoor air, it doesn't help because when we talk about dilution, dilution doesn't happen if the outdoor air is very poor. Now, what other, I have one hand raised. Uh, any questions which are coming? Uh, uh, anybody wants to ask a question? Okay. I'll continue. Um, then uh, when we talk about indoor air contaminants and uh, probably the reason that I have been working in this area for quite some time, um, if you see to the, uh, I am more prone to observe it. If you see to your extreme right, there is a small picture. Um, I hope that is visible. Uh, that is a picture of my car where, um, uh, one of the, I think, uh, the pipes which go for the AC got blocked and uh, the water started from there coming inside the carpet, in the car itself. And this is this is what was the result. Once, uh, I think it happened for two, three days and probably because of the nature of the work, I neglected it. Um, I had to pay in a more harmful way in the sense that because AC was on, and this is the condition of the carpet, very small patch. It is not a big patch uh, of uh, probably molds and fungus, which would, would have come out of that uh, damp carpet. Uh, I had a, a severe allergic reaction, which made me bedridden for, la I think, three to four days at least. And uh, this is why when we say that uh, we talk about the contaminants, we really don't know what we are getting into after being in this area for so long. And again, I neglected it for so long. I had to pay the price. Yes, having said that, carbon dioxide is coming up as one of the major causes of concern when we talk about air quality, uh, indoor air contaminants. Now, it is not said to be a pollutant in the technical terms. Carbon dioxide is an output of a human body. So it is not a, a contaminant, but it is a surrogate index to some extent of the carbon uh, dioxide, which is uh, of ventilation, which is uh, there in that particular built environment. Particulate matter, yes, we know of the background concentration of particulate in India uh, is anyways very high. So that contributed by uh, our uh, behavioral practices uh, of uh, mopping, uh, sorry, cleaning with the broom and resuspending the dust actually uh, creates more of a problem than a solution. Dust mites. How often do we have a habit of uh, getting our uh, carpets, our cushions, our uh, mattresses clean? I think that also uh, plays a role, especially if you are having any uh, pets at home, then it becomes a major source of contention. Toxic gases, which could come from any place from paints, workplace cleaners, disinfectants, but uh, socks and knocks don't come in a um, concentration which is of concern until and unless we are talking about kitchens, where we do have, we do get high concentrations of knocks. Microbial contaminants, as I showed you this picture, any damp area, stagnant water uh, could result in the microbial uh, contaminants. And the problem with the microbial contaminants is you don't know what you are being exposed to, how what uh, intensity you are being exposed to, and how long will it take to subside. So um, indoor air quality, I think in India, with my experience, what I know is uh, whatever we call as viral infection, the, it comes every year, we fall sick. If you consider that as a concern, then the disability adjusted life years, the years of life lost because of the any kind of disability like getting sick frequently is much higher in India than in other countries. So that is something which we really need to take care of. And finally, ozone. Um, Chlorofluorocarbons, probably our refrigerators, photocopiers, electrostatic air cleaners, they could also be the possible sources for indoor air quality uh, deterioration. 
Now, this is, I think we all must be aware of uh, how uh, PM 2.5 particle looks like is something which is shown in pink. PM 10 particle is, and this is our human hair that I'm uh, showing it on screen and the PM 10 is in blue. So the finer the particle, the problem ag aggravates more. So uh, when I started my PhD, um, in way back in 2002-03 and uh, that was the time when this bifurcation of particulate was not in picture. Uh, we used to call it suspended particulate matter, SPM. Around 2004, it started the first of its kind uh, bifurcation we got to know was, uh, it is called as respirable suspended particulate matter where PM 2.5, PM 1, PM 0.3 were thought to be uh, more uh, pollutants of cancer. Similarly, for carbon dioxide, it has uh, the acceptable limits have uh, recently been, uh, you know, changed to four, uh, 450 ppm for atmospheric carbon dioxide. This indoors anywhere more or less than uh, more than 1000 ppm is a problem. It will, it will not have any kind of uh, issues which you can see, but yes, in terms of performance, in terms of uh, longer duration health effects, it will have an impact. And that will be reflected in the case studies that I'll be sharing with you all. Now, uh, yes, this is one very important concept and somehow I, um, I fail to understand uh, the sick building syndrome uh, is an area which has been there since the time the US EPA uh, identified indoor air quality as an important environmental issue. But having said that, the sick building syndrome studies have been very less in India and they are more uh, prominent abroad than in, uh, in US or, or Europe, but not in India. So what is sick building syndrome? Sick building syndrome is a collection of non-specific symptoms, having your know, headache, fatigue, dizziness, irritations. Uh, when you are sitting in a particular microenvironment for a specific duration of time, and the moment you get out of that place, the uh, these symptoms, whatever you are having in terms of fatigue, headache, uh, dizziness, it subsides. Now, um, this. Half of the time, we Indians are very, uh, you know, patient and tolerating. And that is the reason half of the time we take it as, oh, no, no, I didn't sleep well last night. And that's why I'm probably tired. Please notice the surroundings in which you are living in. Please notice the classrooms where you are studying. Please notice the offices you are living in. Probably <coughs> if 20% of people who are working with you, studying with you in a particular environment, complain of any of these uh, symptoms regularly for more than two weeks. It means that your the building that you are working in, studying in, staying in is a sick building. Now, what could be the causes? Again, the causes more or less uh, remain the same that I have talked about, but here we also contribute in a way uh, of um, um, our dependencies have increased on thermal comfort and the way we have um, the air conditioning systems in our home, how many of us actually do clean the air conditioning systems in our home? How often do we clean the filters in our home every month, 15 days, two months? So this is the picture which shows the clarity of uh, when you say that, you know, it's so hot, the AC is also not working. Have you ever tried to check whether the, uh, the filters are clogged or they are, if they are clogged, they are also sources of problem because then they'll be emitting those instead of avoiding uh, uh, this uh, suspension of a fine particulate, it will be distributing it across that particular microenvironment. Now, the symptoms, yes, I think this we all should remember. The symptoms may range from eye, nose, and throat irritation, itchy skin, fatigue, dry cuff, blurred vision, lethargy, difficulty in concentration, 
dizziness and uh, nausea along with headache. And the best part that you can recognize it is please get out of that building if you're having that. And if it subsides after five, 10 minutes, it means that it was building related. Otherwise it was all your problem, not related to the building at all. So now this is, uh, yes. Uh, so these are a few studies. This is a 2018 study that I uh, show just to make you uh, understand how different pollutants have a different impact in different micro environments. If you're talking about PM 2.5, the area of concern is the residences because we tend to, you know, have aesthetics. We have a lot of furnishings around uh, where the particles attach to each other or there are carpets and then grooming and there are a lot of causes which could result in this high concentration of uh, PM 2.5. CO2 it was said to be a major cause of concern wherever we had enclosed spaces corporate offices, you name it. Because in India, I don't know how well do we follow the uh, per square feet per person uh, equation. The, num the occupancy in a particular floor space is much higher than what it should be if we are talking in terms of CO2 levels. Multiplex, again, we have uh, good occupancy and the area is enclosed for a good amount of time. Similar for hospitals, hospitals also uh, showed high concentrations of uh, CO2. But these are the hospitals which were mechanically ventilated. These are not the government hospitals that we are talking about. Volatile organic compounds were a problem in corporate offices, multiplex, and hospitals. And the most common reason that was found in this study was that it had um, the rampant usage of cleaning agents uh, in all the three micro environments that I'm talking about resulted in this high concentration of VOCs. And it stayed that to that level most of the time. It is not the peaks that I'm talking about. This is the average value that you can see on your screens. Similarly, bioaerosols. Now, bioaerosols were found to be very high in the hospitals for various reasons. Obviously, hospitals, there are uh, people who bring infections, there are people who are being treated for infections. But besides that, there are areas where uh, virus, they become a breeding ground for bioaerosols in the hospitals also. Because there is, uh, we try to keep uh, certain areas of the hospitals enclosed and that results in, um, you know, some seepage or uh, water retention and then, uh, which results in higher levels of contributing to the uh, higher levels of bioresorts. Now, this is a study uh, which was done uh, just before COVID happened. And uh, this study was done in um, colleges, schools, restaurants, malls, right, and the offices. Why the idea was to understand the dynamics of indoor air quality in these public buildings because we are spending good amount of time here as a student, as a teacher, as a worker, as a professional. So we should know what are we exposed to. So what you see on your uh, in these graphs is C1, C2, C3. They are the college numbers. There were six colleges which were uh, monitored. And uh, this is, these are the values that we got. The C3 college was supposedly the worst when it came to PM 10 and PM 2.5. It nowhere went less than 300 microgram per meter cube. Now this, if we consider the WHO standards of 15 microgram per meter cube, we are way ahead of it. And I was just reading uh, today in the newspapers, it is the first time that the German citizens, residents have uh, sued the government for uh, not being able to provide healthy air or good air, which is their fundamental right. Uh, and they have asked for uh, uh, some action on not being able to provide them good air. So having said that air, we really, it's high time we treat air 
with as much importance as we give to our water. We need clean water to drink. We need to avoid any kind of problems to our stomach because of drinking water. Similar manner, we need to breathe in good air. So are we getting it? That is a point of contention. Now, uh, in these colleges, the C4 college was the one which was um, partially uh, uh, mechanically ventilated and partially naturally ventilated. The peak that you are able to see is during the time when the night, uh, it is during the night time. So most of the colleges, if you see the peak came during that time only because that was the time when the doors and windows were closed and uh, the panes, the furnitures, they could emit the volatile organic compounds. CO2 levels was found very high in C6, college six, and we have not named them. These all colleges are in Delhi. Probably our kids are going to these colleges and schools, but this is uh, just to show you what the conditions are. So uh, if you see the colleges, if the uh, college timings start from nine, but you have the maximum occupancy uh, in between 11 to two. And that is the time when the CO2 levels rose and they rose highest in C6 college. This college is, uh, this college is in North of Delhi and the levels went up to, if you see the steep line, they went up to approximately 3,500 people. Now, uh, when we monitored the healthcare facilities, uh, these healthcare facilities were government uh, hospitals uh, in Delhi again. So uh, because of the ongoing uh, healthcare facilities are not the place where you don't have people going around the same place over and out again, which resulted in good high concentration of uh, PM10 and PM2.5. The ones which you see in orange and uh, yellow are the ones which were uh, mechanically ventilated. And you can see the difference because probably the mechanical ventilation in these healthcare facilities was good enough because of which the levels uh, stayed around 100 to 150 microgram per meter cube for both. The total volatile organic compounds, again, uh, they were high most of the times in the hospitals. Again, if you see uh, these curves, the H3 uh, hospital and uh, the H6 hospital shows those high uh, peaks and curves. These are the most clean hospitals amongst the lot that we had uh, visited for the monitoring part. CO2 levels. Now, uh, CO2 levels were never below 500 ppm in the hospitals. And they remained, there were no peaks. If you see the peaks are not there, the levels remained consistently around 700 to 1500 ppm. The worst being observed in the third hospital. Then we talk about offices. I think the broken line that you see is some default with the monitor that we were um, monitoring the uh, air quality with. Otherwise, uh, PM10 and PM2.5 were much better off in the offices thanks to the microenvironment, thanks to the air conditioning systems which are generally put into the office, which is a norm. Uh, total volatile organic compounds were also better they rose uh, mostly during the time at the night time if they did or otherwise they were better off than the other microenvironments. The CO2 levels were also better because uh, I think one or two places uh, it was higher. If you see uh, the office six and the office five, these were the ones which had more uh, occupancy in a smaller uh, space, which is resulting, which is why you see the higher uh, range. But I think it was not a fixed uh, occupancy that we were talking about. So that dropped over a period of time as we went through the day. Now, this is what is a point of concern when we talk about indoor air quality. These are schools um, and this study was done in winters. So these are all naturally ventilated schools we had taken. The problem here is our, um, ten, our tendency to close the doors and windows 
in the schools, obviously due to the winter season, in, increase all the uh, pollutants to a substantial level. And you, if you see, they, they don't go below 100, whether it is PM 2.5 or PM 10, they rose as high as 600 to 700 microgram per meter cube, but they are consistently there between three to 400 uh, microgram per meter cube. Similarly, for TVOCs also, the total volatile organic compounds, if you can see the peak around eight to 10, uh, 10 that is the uh, six to eight or around eight, that is the peak that you see. The peak is because of the um, cleaning that happened at the start of the day for the schools. And uh, one or two schools here were also the primary schools. So that is a very important point of concern. Now, if you see the CO2 levels, everything is hunky-dory if we are talking about um, anything uh, in the evening, it is fine. But the majority of the time the students spend in schools is from eight to two. And you, we were, it was an alarming situation for us to see that nowhere it was around thousand, it was more than thousand PPM. And they were probably in a 10 by 10 uh, classroom or 10 by 12 classroom. There were a lot of kids who were there, which could have been a problem and the closing of doors and windows. Now, uh, one apprehension, and I would like to put it forward uh, to the professionals who are there with us. There is still a stigma attached to air quality monitoring. And that is what we observe when we um, try to monitor uh, malls. Because what you see is the hidden monitoring that we could do with the monitors in our bag, sensor-based monitors in our bag. And uh, it was like two to three hours is what we could afford. We couldn't do a 24 hour monitoring because any kind of uh, request or any kind of permission that was asked for was denied. And this is what we got. So if we are getting, I'm not saying this is a complete picture, but in order for us to get a complete picture, we really need to have a more awareness in terms of indoor air quality, air quality per se, and why uh, people are, you know, wary of uh, monitoring indoor air quality in their malls, probably that brings a, a bad brand name to it, could be that. But I, I, this was a problem that we faced. Now, uh, this is why I have put this um, study here is, this is exactly before COVID struck. What happened after COVID was there? So we didn't have a lot of Indian studies. But there are a few studies which I would like to concentrate on. Just to give you a view, since I had told about how a PM10 uh, particle looks like and how a PM2.5 particles look like, that blue dot that you see on your picture, on your screens is 0.1 micrometer. That is a, how small does a coronavirus particle is. And if you compare it with that uh, human hair uh, figure, it is absolutely, you know, vicious in terms of, its size. It can get attached to anything around you and get transported. So when we talk, when we cough, when we sneeze, we, uh, we increase the size of the particles and the number also. The number of particles while sneezing is the maximum. And why is it important is because the finer the particle, the more will it be. It's be the floating time for that particle will be more. Now, uh, just a pictorial depiction of what I was talking about. If we are talk and one very important aspect through this presentation, which I want to convey is, it is if you are being exposed to this for two minutes, if you are exposed for one hour, there is a hell lot of difference. So it is not about just exposure; it is about the duration of exposure as well. So how much, uh, if you are around a COVID person, just passing by and probably being in the lift with a mask, probably may not you know, um, have an impact, but being with that person for a while will do. Now, uh, this is how it all started. This is a case study from uh, China. Uh, that is, uh, uh, this was done in, the, uh, in terms of outbreak in the, restaurant which did not have any kind of natural ventilation. There were 90 uh, people who were uh, 
sitting there and uh, there were some eight uh, waiters who were serving. The air conditioning was uh, not very good as what I, can, uh, I could see from the study. And uh, there was just one person on table A who was infected. And uh, how it impacted the others is this picture that you can see. Table A had one person and then 10 people in that entire restaurant were impacted. So uh, if you see, there is a trend to it. <coughs> After 53 minutes, table A, table C and table B had people who got to be infected later. The length of time which was critical, probably the other table people uh, didn't overlap the uh, time with the uh, table which had the patient, whereas the B and C people spent more time with them across uh, these tables. Now, uh, here the air conditioning played a crucial role. So we say when we talk about particulate, it is important for uh, removing uh, particulate uh, finer particles or probably helping uh, filtering uh, the finer particles. But here, the, uh, the continuous recirculation across uh, helped, re uh, you know, dividing the COVID uh, virus across that same time. If you see the airflow, the airflow was such that the A, B and C table was the most affected. And that is the area of influence where the people are sitting and were found to be affected later on. Similarly, a case study in an office building happened uh, in a call center uh, on the 11th floor of a call center, which had 13 uh, workstations. Now, on some uh, de uh, desk, if you have one person in that same desk, 13 people were tested positive. But out of uh, 137 people, 79 people were positive because they were the ones who were in direct touch with the person who was found to be uh, positive across. So in that particular wing, 57 pe person per uh, people found to be positive. If you talk, uh, and this was an enclosed office that I'm talking about. Outside that office, across the floors, only three people uh, were found to be infected. Giving us an idea that probably sharing the common lobbies, elevators or public utility areas did not have that uh, impact of the virus as much did the that enclosed uh, exposure had in that particular environment, office building. So similarly, this was an uh, outbreak in bus. Again, the problem, it was an air conditioned bus and recirculation infected at least 23 people in that particular bus. So how is it important? How does, uh, is it just the virus which goes around or are there some factors which contribute to it being there or not being there? So one very important factor is the humidity. Now humidity means uh, if we have less humidity, we'll have dry indoor air. If we have dry indoor air, that means the viruses, <coughs> the airborne droplets which uh, surround the virus, they evaporate and become the lighter and they can float for a longer duration of time. Having said that, if they are drier, the virus survives for a longer duration of time. Whereas if the ideal relative humidity is good, then the, uh, the airborne droplets become heavy and they fall out of the air or if the air droplets containing the virus have moisture they there are uh, physiochemical reactions which happen which deactivate the virus in the longer run so higher uh, 40 to 60 percent of relative humidity is what is recommended because covid is not gone and we should be very well prepared for any such attacks in the time to come this is what we really need to look at Ventilation is, uh, as uh, I say, the solution to all the indoor air quality lies in ventilation. Now, ventilation in terms of 
uh, mechanical vent uh, natural ventilation in cold weather in hot weather it is different so we need to understand that it is according to the air exchange rates in particular building in rooms it would be different in passages it would be different but uh, in bedrooms it would be different it depends upon that building and these are certain recommended values which are given by national building codes ashray which are there on your screens and it is approximately if you are talking about rooms it has to be around 6 air changes per hour now this is how uh, i think this is obsolete now so this is how do you mi uh, minimize your exposure one way of minimizing exposure that we have uh, gone through is by cutting down the duration of time trying not to be at a place which is overtly populated for a longer duration of time probably going to a shop and coming back is better nowadays considering the present scenario but uh, during that time how does that exposure have an impact if the cashier is wearing a mask <coughs> let's say if he is infected and he uh, is emitting around 10000 viral particle load if he is wearing a mask the particle load is cut to half then again uh, if the people who are visiting the cashier are also wearing a mask the uh, exposure is again cut to half that is they will be exposed to approximately 2500 viral particles so that is why the importance of mask is of prime importance now these are some of the ishre guidelines which have been really uh, important which came in april 2020 in terms of what should be the room temperature that we should be looking at in uh, in that uh, may june july uh, season the relative humidity that we should be aiming as at is 40 to 70 percent try you uh, if we are using a uh, evaporative coolers try to keep the windows open <clears throat> try to use fans along with the windows partly open the reason be the reducing the stagnation of air to keep the ventilation in a better state of control so how what are the interventions that we thought of one is the source control if we know what is the source avoid it ventilation is the primary solution to any indoor air quality or uh, covid 19 problems distance between uh, whenever there is a now i think this we all know the distance between uh, in the crowded area which will be uh, better and finally having good hygiene now uh, this uh, this is a small layered approach that uh, we had given to covid 19 times one is outdoors is always better than indoors you are meeting 10 people please meet them outdoors instead of calling them home short if you are meeting them at home meet for a shorter duration of time then longer duration of time be mask instead of being unmasked try to socially distance yourself or stay in a smaller uh, not very crowded place try to speak less or speak uh, with a small uh, less of volume and gentle breathing but small uh, behavioral aspects that was uh, that we talked about during the covid <clears throat> now coming back to the indoor air quality aspect there are few studies which i'll uh, fastly rush through to understand what is it that we should look forward to in terms of uh, indoor air quality in india we in india don't have any indoor air quality guidelines and standards ishre does have their own set of indoor environmental quality standards but they really need to be uh, taken up by the government to be uh, to put up as a mandate so uh, we are looking forward to having indoor air quality guidelines for india so these are few of the researches which started this story of indoor air quality way back in 1997 this was when co2 no2 so2 and total suspended particulate were being investigated in the it delhi uh, library where some students complained about being very fatigued or lazy and uh, that uh asked for some kind of monitoring to be done to understand why most of the students are complaining about uh 
feeling fatigued or going to sleep or you know uh, not being able to concentrate that well so that is when we uh, realized that co2 levels were much higher and they were higher during the day concentration it library is a mechanically ventilated library so we could find that there was improper mixing <clears throat> and dispersion at upper floors co2 levels were found to be very high but these were done by uh, low volume samplers and handy samplers so the exact uh, uh, r to r monitoring on per minute data we couldn't get from here similarly uh, a similar study was uh, done and where we tried to relate <coughs> the monitoring levels with the sbs score where we found that maximum people uh, complained the students complained about 30% of students complained of being lethargic or drowsy followed by dryness in mucus irritation in nose and uh, headache so this was done in labs and the library both at iit delhi this was one of the uh, research thesis which was done in iit again uh, sorry uh, airport authority building and it was done with the grab sampling these were the times when we don't uh, we never had those handheld monitors or um, research validated instruments we we had to do grab sampling because we couldn't get a good uh, longer duration sample there uh, and it also showed us that the levels uh, the occupancy levels uh, re resulted in increase in co2 concentration females were found to be more susceptible now this being a, a women's uh, seminar uh, female were found to be more susceptible to sbs symptoms than male and there was uh, in, insufficient supply of fresh air which was found in the building similar study was done for the public buildings now the government has uh, just to give you an update the government has come up uh, the ngt has ordered the uh, ministry of environment and forestry uh, to come up with a certain set of guidelines for indoor air quality uh, in public places so at least that is the first uh, small step forward in this area of research now this again was done for a public building that was it indira gandhi international airport departure terminal this was the first um, study which was which talked about rspm instead of tsp so rspm is uh, but again that you see the spm because we try we were not very sure how these um, monitors would work so we had the spm uh, monitoring also and rspm mo monitoring done together this was a post doctoral research which was done in offices first time which uh, had uh, the both type of sampling techniques integrated and continuous and the uh, where we uh, measured or monitored co2 no2 rspm carbon dioxide uh, uh, carbon monoxide ozone and biosolids here the problem was found to be of in ever sufficient ventilation they were using 100% recycled air which resulted in higher levels of pm 10 2.5 and a higher concentration of co2 levels at all floors now uh, this is a study where i'll take uh, this, since this is my doctoral research uh, that we are talking about uh, i did a study in nizamuddin and iit delhi campus um, nizamuddin was taking a sample uh, where i tried to understand the uh, variation in the socio economic strata so we divided the households i did it in houses we divided the households into lower income group upper income group uh, and middle income group and monitored uh, pm 10 2.5 pm 1 co2 no2 so2 and carbon dioxide now this is the first time that we were using the grim dust sampler and uh, they gave us some amazing results and which i am not very proud of we found out that women were the ones who were most affected in lig households due to usage of biomass fuel now to some of you who are living in delhi it would be you know why were they using they had accessibility to this uh, study uh, 
this study was done in um, Nizamuddin railway quarters. They had accessibility to cleaner fuels, but they wanted to save on the cleaner fuels. And because it was winters, they were using coal or the uh, uh, wooden twigs of the trees for uh, cooking. They were 100% uh, recycled air because winters was the worst season that I observed in my study across any socioeconomic strata because in India, we don't have the system of heating the space. So uh, most of the time, our doors and windows remain closed. And that resulted in very high concentrations of uh, RSPM, especially in uh, higher income group uh, houses. The reason being, I did it in the study in the kitchen area. The reason being they had help uh, in the kitchen area who was doing something or the other, thereby uh, resuspending any kind of uh, dust particles which were around. <coughs> this is a study which was done in a naturally ventilated school. And uh, it talked about SBS, it talked about uh, the formulation of indoor air quality model for the naturally ventilated building. And uh, it used wind tunnel uh, technology in, a, in that building to understand the float uh, airflow pattern and the uh, pressure coefficient. This is uh, one of the studies which was done in metro station uh, platforms where we tried to understand uh, the uh, levels of particulate along with their uh, chemical characterization to understand what are the levels of metals and non-metals which are present. And that could have uh, helped in uh, developing an IQ, uh, IQ protocol for underground metro stations. Uh, these are some of the uh, readings that uh, if anyone wants can please mail to me and uh, I would look forward to having more questions uh, with regards to it. Thank you. Yeah, I could see some of the raised hands. Uh, are they raised still? Can we have some questions, please? Any questions from the participants? Yeah, I could see it. Niladri, yeah, please. Uh, Niladri, yeah, you can please speak up. Are you able to hear me? Hello, uh, uh, Mr. Niladri, uh, can you hear us? You can, you can ask your question directly. Hello. Yeah. Are you able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. We are clearly hear you, but I think. Uh... Well, let's wait for a minute. Probably some network issue. Okay, ma'am. I think she's gone mute. He or she has gone mute. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Time being, uh, can we can take you the can you yeah. put it in chat? Can you put it in the chat box so that we can address it? Yeah, there is one question from Miss Roshni. Have you done any studies in the coaching classes? No, sir. Uh, no, uh, we have not done any studies in the coaching classes. The reason being the moment you say to establishment that we want to monitor your air quality in your office building, we get a very uh, abruptly uh, negative reply. And uh, people are very apprehensive to the fact that their brand name will be uh, you know, brought into. However, if you see that in, in my entire presentation, I've not named any school, any college, any uh, office building, but uh, somehow uh, to convince them to help us uh, with this, it's difficult. 
yeah it will be critical i agree it will be critical but uh, again till the time it comes as a mandate it is very difficult to go through uh, the people in case you have any uh, uh, insight i'll be willing to go ahead with it you can please connect with me do we have any hepa filters for ventilation which has filtration capacity uh for microorganisms similar to coronavirus one micro uh, hepa doesn't cater to coronavirus that we really need to be very clear hepa filtration will not cater to only technology which has uh, shown some significant uh, uh prevention is uvgi technology filtration has not helped in any kind of uh, coronavirus prevention so if you are talking about it i don't think it helps yeah any any more questions you can please uh, niladri uh, can you please put it in the chat box because i can see that you want to speak but there's some network issue time and again if you can type it it would be great any more questions <coughs> yeah roshni uh, i think we can uh, you can speak up if we can talk you can yeah unmute. yeah now can you hear me yes 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 ma'am yeah so my question is when we many people they uh, sleep in air conditioned rooms with a split yes. ac have you done any do you have any studies regarding that specifically yes ma'am we are undergoing that study and um, what we have uh, realized it is that uh, the during that times the levels of co2 increases a lot yes yeah yes. so co2 is a major issue when we talk ab about it otherwise and uh, it has gone uh, from uh, it's not published it is not there in public domain but uh, with my uh, experience i'm telling you with that particular study it had gone as high as 2500 to 3000 ppm <laughs> in a uh, 12 by 15 uh, square feet room yeah and the some i mean uh, you must have heard of all those uh, people recommending some plants which you can keep ma'am it doesn't work there is no data which supports it because it uh, one uh, the plants cater only to the uh, total volatile organic compound content or carbon right. dioxide right but it how big a plant how much should be the foliage for it to make sure that your uh, levels are Uh, done it is not still done and we need to have a chamber study to actually uh, assess that so as of now nasa has only proved it otherwise there is a paharpur business center where they have kept n number of plants and they yeah, have yeah, controlled that. yeah i am aware of those studies yeah but uh, you know you find some whatsapp uh, forward somebody yes ma'am fast tongue and all those things you know yeah ma'am but it is so, not proven that not, is not proven uh, proved, yeah yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Nilatri, can we talk? Might be some network issue, ma'am. I think probably some. Uh, if she can, uh, if they can type, it would be great. Uh, Nilatri, sir, can you type uh, here in chat box or Q and A section? and ladhi sir we we cannot hear you i think uh, best option is to send your question in q and a section okay. 
uh, or if it is not possible here uh, i mean you can, you can send the, on uh, offline also yeah okay. offline also or you can send the question in uh, admin at dcstate.org as well so we will take it further fine i think we can go ahead up yeah so i think ma'am uh, 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 webinar gone uh, half day workshop we have i think almost we have completed this is was the last session that we have taken q and a session yeah. uh, such noble indoors topic was and greatly covered by you uh, so i think uh, we'll have to think more about that how uh, the next i mean edition of this topic we can enroll here Oh, and I have, I have, I have the. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Tapas. I think I have uh, the question from Niladri, and uh, okay, Mr. Okay. Manish also has asked for. Okay, maybe, okay. I think two, three questions has been. Yeah, they have come, so I'll address please, them. Please take then, one by one. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my email, I have sent it to you. Okay, and I uh, IQ is. very very general when we design hvac system we consider the applications in india we have not made any specs for hospital iq yeah ma'am uh, or sir i'm so sorry if i'm addressing you wrongly uh, it is general but the problem is that uh, since it is general nobody is taking uh, it into consideration that it is important so we don't have any specs for anything until and unless we have a guideline from the government saying that these are the levels that we really need to uh, look forward to um iq will always be a part of a background air quality issue so if uh, i don't know whether this suffices your question but you are uh, when i uh, you are saying iq is very general we are talking about hvac system hvac system uh, is not there in all the public buildings if we consider a public buildings it has to be um, half of the places is hybrid or they are naturally ventilated also so we really have lot of unanswered questions where we really have to have an insight to it how do we maintain good indoor air quality in naturally ventilated mechanically ventilated and hybrid buildings in built environment right tapas i'm done okay ma'am so i think uh, all the question has been well taken or uh, should we wait for um, one two minutes more if any question is coming yes yes so uh, i think uh, all the question has been well taken and uh, this is one of the 
fine works of i would say in terms of uh, uh, that you have clarified the answer uh, for the audience questions of course this program is organized by women isre of delhi chapter of isre is sponsored by intelligent technology we are thankful to intelligent technology for sponsor this uh, program and also we are thankful to all the annual partners platinum partner arma cell world partner elpr of flex ksb silver partner syscan advance wall mavex and annual partner andrews hydro paramount polytrid capflex and membership partner standard recreation and of course ma'am it's uh, again very much thankful to you despite having you fever and you have taken time and manage yourself to speak in this forum so kudos to you ma'am thank you very much and of course all the audience that for their participation we are thankful to them any more questions or any suggestions you can send up back to us at uh, admin at dcisrae.org we'll take it further so thank you very much any any last line from you ma'am and uh, will close the session for the day right thank you tapas thanks for uh, the patient listeners and thanks for organizing this uh, any any queries i'll be more than willing to uh, talk about it or discuss it in uh, on mail or on phone so please feel free to connect with me thank you thank you ma'am so before closing this one request from my side one who is non member here they can join us and as uh, i have already told in every workshop and uh, i repeat this again and again because uh, members are strength of uh, uh, the society and uh, to join isre uh, is very simple you will have to go to the website you can join to uh, online or offline online is the best mode you can reach so uh, i mean according to your compatibility uh, you can go to the delhi chapter website or isre.in both the website there is membership link available there is two types of membership free or 10 years of membership whatever suits you you can join us and there are abundant of uh, networking opportunity you will find and of course if you embellish your network in terms of business in terms of knowledge in terms of i mean uh, your reach so it will going to be benefit to you only so this is the best platform uh, for engineers isre Uh, join us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, could we close for the session?